Welcome to Electron Line. To find the limit of our next sequence, we have to use some special tricks here. Here we're told that the first element is equal to 1, and every subsequent element, like n plus 1, is equal to 1 plus half the previous element. So what does this converge to, if it converges at all? Well, let's go down the list away. Let's find a of n plus 2 and a of n plus 3 and so forth and see what this develops into. So let's start with the next one. A of n plus 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 half a of n plus 1. And a of n plus 1 is defined right here, so this can be written as 1 plus 1 half times, that would be 1 plus 1 half a sub n. If we then multiply this out, this becomes equal to 1 plus 1 half plus 1 quarter a sub n. Now we do it again. Now we have a sub n plus 3 is equal to 1 plus 1 half a sub n plus 2, which is equal to this. And that would be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 quarter a sub n. If we then multiply this together and we add the terms, we get this is equal to 1 plus a half plus a quarter, which is 3 quarters, plus 1 eight a sub n. Let's do it one more time so we can see a pattern here. a sub n plus 4 is equal to 1 plus 1 half a sub n plus 3, which is equal to this. So it would be 1 plus 3 quarters plus 1 eight a sub n. So this becomes equal to 1 plus a half plus 3 eighths. That would be 1 half plus 3 eighths, which is 7 eighths, plus 7 eighths, plus 1 half times this, or 1 sixteenth a sub n. Now we begin to see a pattern. Notice we always have a 1 plus. Here we have 1 plus 1 half, 1 plus 3 quarters, 1 plus 7 eighths. So it looks like the second term in each case is a fraction where the numerator is 1 less than the denominator. And also notice that the numerator is n plus 3, or I should say 2 to the 3 minus 1 power, minus 1, and the denominator is 2 to the 3 minus 1 power. Let me show you in just a moment what, that, what I mean with that. If we take in general a to the n plus k, this would be equal to 1 plus. It would be 2 to the k minus 1 subtract 1 from that. So it would be 2 to the k minus 1 in the numerator. But take that and we subtract 1 from that divided by the denominator would be 2 to the k minus 1. If k is 4, then it would be 2 to the third power, which is 8 minus 1, which gives you 7. If k is 4, in the denominator we get 2 to the 4 minus 1, or 2 to the third power, which is 8. So it gives us the proper fraction, but here, of course, I have to subtract 1 from the 8 to get 7. And then the next case here, this would be plus 1 over 16 would be 2 to the k power, because in this case, if k is 4, 2 to the 4th power is 16, times a to the n. So now I have a general statement of every element in the sequence, because this here would be 2 raised to the k minus 1 power. All right. If that's the case, I can now let k go to infinity. I find the infinite power. So in the limit, in the limit, as k goes to infinity, a to the n plus k power is equal to. Well, we're always going to get a 1 in the front. That doesn't change. Plus, the next term is going to be 2 to the infinity minus 1 in the numerator. 2 to the infinity minus 1. Subtract 1 from that. So I'll put that in parentheses, and divide that to, by 2 to the infinity minus 1, so that would be the second term, and then plus 1 over 2 to the infinity power, and that would be times a to the n. So now we can simplify. So in the limit, when I have 2 to the infinity minus 1 divided by 2 to the infinity minus 1, the minus 1 in the exponent doesn't make any difference. Infinity minus 1 is still infinity, 
And if I subtract one from that, I still get infinity. So in the limit, I get infinity divided by infinity. So as I approach that limit, this fraction should equal one. In other words, I have one half, three quarters, seven eight, 15 sixteenths, 31 30 seconds, and so forth. So you can see as you get closer and closer to infinity, that fraction gets closer and closer to one. So in the limit, this becomes equal to one plus one plus zero, because 1 divided by infinity is 0, and so therefore this is equal to 2. It converges to 2. There's another way in which we can look at this. Let's continue. Let's go back over here and let's take a look at that. So we can say that this can be written as 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth a sub n. And this would be 1 eighth a sub n. And the next one could be written as 1 plus 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth a sub n. And of course, in the limit, you can see that this will continue. And this portion right here, if this continues out to infinity, this will add up to 1. 1 half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth and so forth to infinity. So this becomes 1 plus 1 plus and if this goes to infinity, 1 over infinity times a sub naught would be plus 0, which is equal to 2. And that would be another way of finding the limit of this particular sequence. So you can see sometimes it gets a little tricky, but that's how you can do that in this particular case.